Hey, it's King of Zakir here. So I finally completed the 100 game challenge, or rather, I completed it a couple days ago, but I'm only just now getting around to actually um, uh, sorting through the stats, recording them, and having it in a easy to digest form. So I've got, uh, after this match, I'll take a look at the deck, and then we'll take a look at all the fun statistics. <laughs> Uh, and also, I, so this is actually showing me as zero games, but obviously that's not correct. Um, I accidentally deleted the deck because I thought I was, you know, just just done with it or whatever. <laughs> and deleting the deck, you know, of course, deletes the stats. Uh, just on this, though. I still have the stats on my Google Sheet. Uh, let's pull it up right now. So, yeah, this 100 game challenge, I'm definitely glad I did. I definitely feel like I, I'm a better player because of it. Uh, there were definitely lots of points where like, I was like, man, I just, I don't want to play this deck. There were obviously some, uh, there are some mistakes in what the deck is being built around. And just looking back over this, like, okay, this is a really nice jumping off point, I think, but I'm very skeptical that this deck has a 75% win rate, uh, and you know, near rank 15 or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> unless we're talking like 10 games, you know, where he got really lucky or something. Uh, cause you know, just, uh, just today I went like nine games in a row. I, I won nine games in a row with, oh, well, uh, yeah, I won nine games in a row with wounding Harold and that was really fun. And obviously I could just like, yeah, yeah, I got a hundred percent win rate against, weather monster or something like that right or i have a you know uh 85 percent win rate uh at the time but obviously you know it's a little bit skewed i feel like i feel like that's kind of the, the situation here uh and recently he actually made a change where he took out the first light and put in a biting frost which i definitely agree with that's such a really good card and then and you know biting frost isn't gonna really hurt you all that much also it's really good against um spying nilf guard One of us or not. Uh, so I'll give you a bit of a taste of some of the stats that we have here. So the overall win rate, I ended up hitting 51%. Wow. Man, this this control that this uh, skull of Tal's got on me is rough. And I have no promotes. I would have to use my hero power alone. And if he hits me with another smite... No, no, he can't use smite again. He can't smite again. Okay, yeah, I should be good. I should be able to win the round by this point. Uh, so my win rate was 51% and that was, and I only just eked that out at the end. Uh, the average MMR was 2,824, which makes sense. Uh, my win rate, I mean, my MMR at the time, I believe was around 2,700. So it makes sense that it would be like that. Uh, just today, like I said, I went on a pretty big win streak and went up to 3,100. Going to be shooting for that, thir that rank 13 here pretty soon. My longest win streak was eight. My longest loss streak was five. Oh. Uh, so I guess now is the time to promote here. Or maybe I can Shawnee. No. Maybe I go for this instead. Three, four, five versus seven. So. You I think that's the right move. Yeah. I I want to hold on to my hero ability for the next for round three. Uh, my longest lost streak was five, and that happened on three separate occasions, which is very painful. During each of those times, you know, where I'm hitting that fifth loss, like those are the times where I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna quit. But I didn't. I stuck to it, man. Uh, and what's interesting is that um. Unfortunately, I don't have the the uh, Gwent Tracker stats to kind of compare with. Um, but basically, Gwent Tracker doesn't actually count draws. And I had like four draws. I find that pretty interesting. So my Gwent Tracker was actually a little bit off. I think it said I had around a 54% win rate. But because I counted the draws as losses, so it kind of made it skewed a little bit. Even though I technically probably could have counted draws as just non-existent data, but... Uh, cause you know, if, cause in a, in a ranked situation, which is kind of the lens I kind of want to look at this as, 
I don't believe you would lose MMR for uh, hitting a draw, but, uh, you know, I'm being a little bit more tough, a little bit more stringent on myself just to try and, you know, look for improvement. Um, so a really big combo in this deck is actually pretty fun. It's Dandelion plus the Siege Expert and then playing all your Siege. I really, I really enjoy that. Because, <laughs> you know, you're getting a unit that's going from four and then it's going to... Uh, nine right just in that one little combo and what it doesn't sound all that much for just one but when you keep doing it over and over and over again it really builds up I'm an officer and a gentleman. uh there are a bunch of more stats here that i'm going to go over here pretty soon and these are the juicy stats you know this is the good stuff <laughs> let's see what is that card bound to be It's probably the one that cancels out an effect and smites. Maybe. Huh. Wasn't Don't expecting that. On us. The storm is coming. Let's enjoy the weather while we still can. Yeah, overall, very interesting experience for these hundred games. I played something like two two to three hours a day. I think I got in about 10 games an hour or so. I, I think it actually almost lined up exactly like that, which I thought was pretty funny. None shall tread on us. Hmm. Okay, I should be fine, I think. He does have an Ethne, though. An Ethne could be really troublesome. Okay, just replaying the... Uh, that card should be fine then oh you know what king of beggars uh actually all my units are gonna die i did choose one then king of beggars is gonna take a medic no no, no. king of beggars is gonna hit priscilla i think hitting priscilla is more important so i'll just go ahead and uh sack the reaver scout unless he does it twice and then i'm boned <laughs> i really hope he doesn't do that twice I uh, call it back, that is. I think I lost this. I'm just not going to have a big enough combo with... Uh... Ugh, man, that's rough. Okay, so I'm just going to... I'm not going to waste King of Beggars. I'm going to try and pull for something that pulls out another unit. Oh, it's going to work on that. I should have done that in the first place. Oh, well. Okay, so long as he doesn't have anything big left, I think I can just eke it out, just barely. Priscilla, no promote, please. Yes, field medic. What do you want of me? Yes, all right. I think I can win this. <laughs> Assuming, uh, you know, I don't get hit with a really hard special card. Huh. Alright, well, let's just hope uh, one of those last two cards isn't like a D-bomb. I think the only way uh, this person can win is if they D-bomb me. That would really suck. Nope, no D-bomb. I actually won that. That's crazy. Wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I wonder what those last two cards were that they didn't play it at all. I guess... They just wanted to turn over the win. They, they didn't think they had a chance. All right. Let's go and take a peek in the deck. Cards, deck builder. So, like I mentioned a couple times, like, there were... I, I don't really like how this deck is built all that much. Like, this, uh, like, the Cadwini Sergeant and the Baron or Sergeant and one of the other gold cards. I think that's really cute, but also... It requires multiple cards, and the payoff isn't actually that big. And it really hurts to have a card like Cadwini Surgeon, which actually might be harmful or just straight out bad. Uh, so I think it it is cute, but it really doesn't work. <laughs> uh, kind of on the similar lines with Dandelion and the Siege Expert. Uh, if you can get both of these cards going on one round and like continually buffing that Siege line, it can be really powerful, but I found that... Pretty often didn't actually hit very well. 
and also like uh, like medicing into a siege uh, siege, uh, siege expert it can be really painful because it's such a weak card by itself, and you like have no other cards. I ran into a couple times, but I pulled that in the last turn or last round, and it would just lose me the game. And that was really frustrating. Uh, the medics, the Reaver Scouts. I have a newfound appreciation for Reaver Scout. So previously, I would always kind of play it like to have like one or none Reaver Scouts in my opening hand. But the thing is, you want all your Reaver Scouts in your opening hand. Uh, so it's just kind of like a, a a concept that didn't really occur to me, even though it was pretty straightforward. But anyway, Reaver Scouts are they're a lot better than I than I remember. It, they still hit the they still have that problem where. If you're trying to play them like on round three, or if you're trying to play them and you don't have the right card on the board already, it can be really painful. I think generally speaking, I would probably take out like a Siege Expert and put in another Trebuchet or something like that. And also, like you have a lot of, you have two of these one-offs, right? Uh, your, Reaver, your Reaver Scout can't hit either of those, <clears throat> so that can be a little painful. But whenever it did actually pull into like uh, Medics and Siege Sours, that made the winning condition a lot more common than it otherwise would be. <clears throat> Of course, all these other cards. Oh, Yennefer is probably the only card I really need to talk about. Yennefer is so amazing. Uh, so I had always thought it was like a really niche card that doesn't actually work all that often. But in fact, against things like uh, Skoatow's, you know, Commando spam, you can hit all of those. Against Consume Monsters, Monster spam, you hit all of those. Or if you're planning to get someone who's more controlly, it doesn't have a lot of units, then you can just hit all your units. Or you can just skew it by allowing uh, Kranorex hit uh, a skewed amount of cards because all your cards are golden, right? And also, this gives you two gold cards, which busts both these uh, these Siege Towers up even more. So, Yennefer is a fantastic card. It's a card I never really considered for a golden hand cell deck, but I think this is a must-pick in a golden hand cell deck. It's so damn powerful. And you know, at worst, you're breaking even, right? You're get, you're getting a uh, actually. I think the only time it actually is bad is when uh, you're up against like a spying spying nilf guard, and you know you buff all your units, and then he just takes them all right back. That can be a little troublesome. Similarly with uh, the bloody baron, that happened that happened once, I think, where I was, you know, the the little lover cam was buffing my units, and my he just stole them right back. <laughs> So, Gloon Henselt, 100 games, 51% win rate. It was interesting. There were definitely a lot of changes that I would make. Uh, like, for example, uh, Quadin Sar Sergeant, the Siege Expert. I think maybe Dandelion could stay. Maybe. Yeah, I think Dandelion could stay, but I would take out Siege Expert, Sergeant, maybe even the Baron for something else. Uh, but this is a really good jumping off point. Also, uh, First Light for... The Biting Frost, I totally agree with. Oh, and Decoy was always a weird card. I feel like that was more more than often a dead card. I don't like Decoy in this deck at all. Uh, but what do I replace it with? Probably just the, the Silver Drake. Maybe a D-Bomb. Eh, it would probably be the Silver Drake. Although I can't really blame him for putting Decoy in there because uh, the rest of these cards aren't all that great. Maybe like a Prince Dennis. Yeah, maybe a Prince Dennis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. because I don't like having... Prince Dennis and a Siri, but since we don't have Siri, then Prince Dennis would be good. So I'd put, I would put Stennis in here, Biting Frost, like he already did. Take these two cards out, kind of maybe add like a third Reaver Scout and a third Trebuchet to kind of give a little bit more consistency. Keep Dandelion, keep, or get rid of Baron, put in uh, the Gold Drake or Trisbutt. It would probably be the gold drake because I'm running into a lot of golden hen celts that play this like three turns before the end, right? And then, you know, it doesn't hit any of their units because they're all gold, right? And even if you do hit a deep bomb, it's still probably going to hit your own units. So unless it's a mirror matchup, this card hits really hard. And I think that's really fun because, <laughs> like, it's so... It's such a devious little play that really only works in one instance, and but otherwise is uh you know pretty useless. But in that one instance, it just obliterates you. So good stuff. We'll take a look at some of these stats. Okay, I need to switch. There we go. Oh, okay, this works. Uh, yeah, this is the the document that I was keeping track of. There's also a Google Sheet, but that's all messy. Uh, so yeah.
Win rate, 51%. Average MMR, 2024. The lowest MMR went up against was 796, and it was a siege fault test, not lost. The highest MMR is 466, 4,661. Yeah, 4, Brew versus Goatow, I lost. Uh, longest one trigger, like I said, eight. Lost trick five, did happen a couple times. Uh, I won round one, 77% of the time. I ran uh, won round two, 27% of the time, so very low. And half of that is actually losing the first round and then winning the second. Uh, only very rarely do I, do I think do I win round one and two consecutively. Um, and then all these stats uh, I'll show with my fun little. So yeah, this is my handy little pie chart. So I went up against 28 games as Goatel. 25 games in Northern Realms, 20 against Monsters, 19 Nilfgaard, and only a measly 8 in Skelliger. I found that really surprising. Looking over here at the, the actual chart, try not to mess up my whole view. Uh, so, went up against uh, my win rate against Dagon. My overall win rate against Monsters is 40%, 8 out of 20. Uh, three out of twelve against Dagon, and a pretty favored against Aridin and Gales. Yeah, Dagon just oh my gosh, he always just wrecked me. I always felt like oh man, going against you know consume or weather monster, auto loss right. That was frustrating. Northern Realms fourteen twenty five fifty six percent win rate. Most of those were Golden Hensel. It's a little bit of siege full test, a little bit of Radovid. Generally pretty favored. Uh, these were the mirror matchups I think, and I think I just kind of brute force my way into those wins or in other words i think what my skill had more to do with it than the way the deck was constructed because i just barely kind of went over those barely over 50 percent let's go towel by far the most right 17 28 60 percent win rate it was always pretty favored 10 over 18 against bruver five over eight against ethne two out of two against francesca uh the francesca ones were probably you know newer players or whatever ethne um, I don't really remember the Ethne games all that much, but a little bit favored. The thing I kind of got from Bruver, I felt that a lot of people were just net decking because it was the most powerful thing, and they may not have necessarily been the best at that deck. What well, That's just kind of the general feeling that I got, and I think that's why it's maybe a little bit more favored than it otherwise should be. Skelliger, only 3 out of 8, 37%. I lost every single game against Wooney Herald. Uh, one both against the brand discard and a couple of war cries, uh, crutch and crate. Nilfgaard, 10 out of 19, 52%, a little bit of favored. Went up against mostly Morvren. Uh, some spying, some reveal, but none of them were too noteworthy. <clears throat> On to the next one. Okay, so here's my second chart. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can zoom this in. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so this is uh, my win percentage over time. So as you can see, it starts up here around uh, 0.48 or so. And then it goes sharply down, it goes sharply up, and sharply down, sharply up, sharply down. So this is kind of the figuring out it period. This is kind of like the stabilization as you get more games. Uh, so there's not really a whole much to be gleaned here, except that, you know, the less that you have, the more fluctuating it's going to be. But as you can see, there's a definite trend that as I got better, I playing this deck, my win rate also improved. There's a nice little steady curve that's going right up, right? So this is a big win streak right here. And this is a win percentage over time, by the way. So it goes way up here. Huge loss, huge loss. This is, I think this is right around the point where I was actually, you know what, I think I am done with this. This is when I had like a 33% win percentage. And I was feeling just absolute despair. But then, you know, I, I buckled up and I just kept going. Big win streak, another big loss streak, another big loss streak here, and then it's kind of stabilized, 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 a little bit of a hit, nice big win streak right here, and then stabilize, stabilize, stabilize until I just barely beat that 51%. Fun stuff. This is another relatively interesting one. Yeah, come on. So this shows the... Uh, the number of games per elo or ranking so you can see it has a kind of a bit of a bell curve here very little below 1600 kind of spikes up right here uh 16 to 2000 kind of goes steady steady spikes up again right at where my elo is my ranking was at 2700 or so 
kind of goes down a little bit, down a little bit, down a little bit. Boom, another spike at like 3,700 or so. I'm not really sure why that was. Is that maybe where you hit rank 15 and all the people that just hit rank 15 were just kind of chilling out and casual? But anyway, so it goes way, way, way down and it goes way, way back up at 40, uh, 4,500. So kind of interesting. I expected it to be a little bit more of a smooth curve. I didn't, maybe it's just, I didn't have enough games, but I think it's interesting how it goes kind of like shoots up spikes, shoots down spikes back up, shoots down and then spikes again. I wonder what it is about these particular ELOs rankings in particular. But anyway, that was fun. One last one. And this one, uh, is a little bit confusing. <laughs> so basically this is my win percentage. Uh, over elo per elo so basically as you get higher higher in the elo you can see where it kind of plateaus a little bit and those plateaus means i was not winning games so for example so we start over here uh, about you know 1600 or so or something like that there's a sharp incline right that means i'm winning lots of games at this elo winning lots of games here winning lots of games steady win steady wins right here and then it plateaus Oh, you know what? This wasn't actually whimper. Uh, this uh, the Y side isn't percentage wins. This is how many games I won, right? So the steady incline and plateau is right around thirty three hundred or thirty two or something like that, thirty two hundred, and then it kind of a little bit of a rise, a little bit of a rise, and then plateaus hard again. So as you can see, uh, this is kind of like obvious, I guess, in the retrospect, but it's interesting to see the data laid out like this, and I wish. I'd like it to be a little bit cleaner. I never really actually caught the right chart. I think that I wanted to show this off. Basically, uh, in the lower yellow, it's be below 3,200. You know, I had a very steady win rate. But then as it got up into the higher, you know, it plateaus hard. And I was winning a lot less, which, you know, makes sense. But, but yeah. Into a lot of rambling. It's Gwen Henselt. <laughs> It was, it was, I guess, fun. It was uh, definitely an le interesting learning experience to go through this, uh, you know, 10-hour process where I made no changes and I just tried to learn this deck for what someone else saw in it. Uh, I don't think I'd ever take that deck into ranked. <laughs> I think there are better Golden Hand Cell decks that are out there. But this is a nice little fun offshoot that uses, uh, you know, lots of small-time buffs over time while still retaining a bit of a swing. But anyway... Uh, this other deck that I'm checking out, which I'll probably make a video about, I'm not really sure, but I've really been enjoying it. It's the game that I, um, Impetuous Pandas X-Men, I have a 68% win percentage right now, which I'm pretty sure I can go higher. 100% win rate against Novgaard so far, 86 against Monster, very favored. Uh, the Golden Hand Cells that I've been running into have just been crushing me, but otherwise, Skoatal, Skelliger, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good win rate. That's actually what has gotten me to 3,100 and what will probably hit. I'll probably hit rank 15 with this deck because I'm feeling it, man. This deck is good. But anyway, that's for next time. But I'm not doing a 100 game challenge of this uh, this deck. Not yet. I want to take, generally speaking, when I do the 100 game challenges, I don't want it just to be meta decks. I want it to be, you know, kind of the, the fun little offshoots from, uh, you know, the lesser known people. I guess this guy's lesser known, but you know what I mean. Anyway, that's it. That is it. Thanks for watching.